In this presentation, I'm going to explain to you how S. Truett Cathy, the multi-billionaire behind the multi-billion dollar franchise Chick-fil-A, succeeded. This information is from the book, How Did You Do It, Truett? It is a book written by Truett Cathy about how he succeeded. I recommend the book if you want more details. But let's just get started. How did he build a franchise from one store into a multi-billion dollar empire? Well, first part is uh, very simple. In fact, all of his principles are simple in concept. The people, you have to hire the right people. So create a culture that sex, sets, expects, and rewards high standards and performance. Also, make sure those people care about others, have a strong work ethic and talent, and are there for the long term. He doesn't want his franchise owners to be here and gone within a couple years. Uh, when he's interviewing, he's screening to see if they're there. They want to be there for the next 10 years of their life. Another part of it is kindness. He wants people who are kind to their customers and gives them a product that they'll be so pleased by that they, they'll come back. I have a peach here as a graphic because uh, there's a story about peaches that uh, really uh, affected Truett Cathy's principles and business style. So back in the day, you could buy buckets of peaches, and uh, most of the time, uh, you would only find out until after you buy them and when you're at home, but all the peaches at the bottom of the bucket would be rotten and disgusting. And that's because these businesses that sell peaches would stuff the nasty peaches that they couldn't sell in the bottom of the barrels. Until one day... Truett bought a bucket of peaches from someone and he found the best, most delicious peaches at the bottom of the bucket. Uh, so this was odd, so he talked to the business owner and the business owner was like, yeah, I, I understand how the scene is in the marketplace and this is the right thing to do. This is the kind thing to do. And that stuck with Truett and of course he used it in his own principles. Even when you think you can get away with it in the short term by being not so kind, in the long term, people find out and it affects your reputation. So, so do the right thing, even if you think you'll get away with it. Um, he has a saying, courtesy is cheap, but it pays great dividends. It doesn't usually cost much time or energy or money to be kind and courteous, but people don't do it. And if you do it and you invest that little bit of time and energy, you can get great dividends in terms of money, in terms of your just general life or reputation in the long run. Have a positive mental attitude and go beyond what's expected of you. Uh, going beyond expectations is another key part of uh, Chick-fil-A's legendary service. I mean, if they're known for anything, it's for service. And Truett made sure to have his employees always go beyond expectations. Here's a Christmas story for you. So um, one day it was Christmas and Truett was watching his employees and one of his employees, who back in the day, um, you worked as a waiter as well for his franchise. Um, his he was about to collect the check and you know say goodbye to a guest, and the employee said, "Hey, it's Christmas. This meal is on me," and he paid for it out of pocket with his own money. Now you can imagine employees didn't make much um, at that time or even now, so that's a monumental gesture. So Truett went to this guy and he was like, why did you do that? Why did you pay out your own, uh, own pocket for this? And the employee said, well, it's the right thing to do. It's the kind thing to do and it's Christmas. Um, so um, that Christmas gift to that employee, to that guest paid off. That guest, that customer returned time and time again to Chick-fil-A and was so astounded that he told everyone about Chick-fil-A. That's the same type of principle that Truett took and implemented across his uh, restaurant chains and uh, his teams. So he made sure that everyone on, uh, on his teams went above expectations. Um, he also made sure that his employees said, my pleasure, instead of uh, you're welcome. And that's because he wanted his employees to go above the, go past the extra mile. Um, also, it, it connotates something different. My pleasure implies that you're, you're enjoying helping out and, and delivering extra service. 
Uh, whereas, you know, saying you're welcome or just a bare minimum of like uh, no problem doesn't really do the same thing. Saying my pleasure is going above and beyond because you're, you're, it's not even work. You're enjoying the process of uh, helping others and doing the extra, going the extra mile. So keep it simple. It, it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, there's three things that were associated with Chick-fil-A success. Great tasting food a clean, wholesome environment, and great customer service. Um, the, the last bullet I have on here is just a bonus tip that relates to these three. Um, so it's not part of those top three, but it's related in the sense that it's also about keeping it simple. Clean bathrooms. So he gets asked sometimes, how do you keep your bathroom so clean? Most fast food places have nasty bathrooms. Well, he says it's it's not super complicated. It doesn't require some type of rocket science. It just comes down to discipline and time. So you find someone who is disciplined, hire them, and then you make sure they allocate the appropriate amount of time to cleaning those bathrooms. So true, it lives by one golden rule, and that's to uh, the golden rule: uh, do as to others as you would like them, how they to treat you. Um, it's about kindness, um, and he believes that balancing uh, your personal character with your profits will lead to more success in the long run. Uh, unfortunately, he, he sees most businesses as having no personal character and doing everything they can to make a lot of profit. And although many do make a lot of profit, he believes by balancing personal character and profit, he's not sacrificing, but he's actually going to make more money in the long run with his reputation and so forth. Uh, he believes that there is no difference between his, uh, the biblical principles um, of Christianity and the uh, business principles. So he says if, if you need a guide, just follow, follow the Bible. As you can tell, he's pretty religious. Speaking of ethics, uh, he thinks there's no such thing as business ethics. He thinks that you know the culture and values of a business are indicative of the leader. Whoever's leading the company, that's that's what the business is going to reflect. So you better have a good character, otherwise the, the business is going to reflect that. For Chick-fil-A, um, there's three things uh, that make up its success, product, people, and purpose. One of uh, the number one questions, if not the number one question he gets asked is, why are you closed on Sundays? Well, first off, it's a religious uh, and ethical thing. He thinks it's just the right thing to do from a religious standpoint. But um, it's also a uh, one of the best business decisions he, he's ever made. Um, on the surface, it looks like he's losing 20% of his sales every week because that's a big business day. Um, and his competitors are making sales that day that equate to 20% of weekly sales. But... Uh, he thinks uh, people who say that are looking at it the wrong way. Everyone needs a break or vacation, even the machinery. And he thinks that even when you're switching shifts and maybe the franchise owner takes off on Sunday or Saturday, uh, in the back of your mind, he's in in the back of his mind, he's still not going to be completely relaxed at rest and taking that vacation because he knows the business is still running while he's he's taking that break and it's going to affect his anxiety, his stress levels, and his relaxation. So therefore, he thinks everyone needs a designated day where everyone's just taking a break and relaxing. And he thinks, you know, he does better in the long run because of this. In fact, according to his numbers, he makes more in six days than many competitors do in seven. So how can you get better service? Well, um, he has a uh, concept called second mile service. It's easy to understand. So this is how you can up-level your service. Uh, with first mile, uh, that's what um, everyone should be doing anyways. You want to greet people with a smile, you want to deliver food quickly and accurately, and you want to have a clean environment. But at Chick-fil-A, you want to go to second mile. So you want to go above and beyond. You want, to, uh, you want it to be about the heart. Uh, you want to make your customers go wow. And you want to, um, if anything, to summarize this whole slide, it's about um, 
exceeding expectations. Um, Truett lets his employees do this how they want as long as expectations are exceeded. It could be flowers on a table, it could be folded toilet paper, however you want to do it, just make sure you exceed expectations. So speaking of how he delegates, that's a great point in micromanagement. Uh, Truett doesn't micromanage. He sets the large overarching goals and he lets others figure out the specifics or uh, the details uh, and, and they get autonomy in that uh, framework. So with his franchise owners, he says, I want you to open a store and keep it open. You know, those are the two requirements. And he doesn't go into too much detail about um, exactly how to do it and micromanage every single detail. So in conclusion, summarizing what was said, Chick-fil-A's success comes down to a few simple to grasp uh, but harder to execute concepts. Um, be selective about who you hire, delight your customers, and let that reputation and past customer experience help with your marketing, and make cost-effective strategic decisions such as in location, marketing messages, and so forth. Uh, Truett was very good at choosing locations and shopping malls and with a lot of people and then also uh, crafting brochures, marketing flyers, messages based on the constraints of every location. For example, in a shopping mall, you're probably going to have less space and less ability to hand out things. So you have to make whatever you say in your brochures matter. Versus like if your store is on the roadside, you're going to have less people flowing through it on foot and therefore you can't uh, hand out flyers as much and therefore Truett would only give out Be Our Guest flyers which offered a free Chick-fil-A sandwich on sh in shopping malls because you could hand those out and then he would try other strategies at the uh, drive through locations. So. Um, I here's a quick review on the book I thought it was fantastic I was astounded at how he could take all these complex business print uh, you know problems and all the hassles that come with business and distill them down into uh, such easy to understand simple principles and uh, lessons and it really makes me think that business doesn't have to be super complicated and I think maybe the big issue is that people simply just don't know uh, what it, what is required to succeed and then they just don't prioritize or take action on these simple concepts um, and so I think this book needs to see more of the light of day and people need to talk about this more than um, more popular overly complex business books that we hear about like lean startup or whatever else that they're they're you know that's on a bestsellers list I mean this guy made billions this guy has one of the most memorable brands out there and he makes it so simple just like Jack Welch I mean Jack Welch could have got super complicated in his books with all the discounted cash flow models and stuff that he had to deal with with General Electric but he just explained it in such simple terms just like Kath, uh, Truett Cathy so that's it you know keep it simple delight your customers Go above expectations, hire the right people. Um, I think it's so memorable, it's so simple, and I think we can all benefit from this message.